On this episode of Carnage, we're finally putting together Super Mang's engine. Well, it's no doubt the last few months have been pretty tough on everyone. We've been banging away on Dad's Ute, trying to get it ready for Mopar Sunday. Well, Mopar Sunday's come and gone. Uh, re reality of the situation is that a lot of people are stuck at home. All the businesses we're dealing with are click and collect at the moment. So that's oh, so frustrating. We can't just duck down the street and grab the parts we need and put them into a car. So, you know, right now we've got a whole bunch of stuff ordered for the ute. None of it is here. So the reality is that we're going to have to switch on to something else. And we actually do have the parts for Superman. They've been sitting here waiting for us to finish the ute for quite a while. So let's sling the Superman engine back together, get it in the car. Well, hopefully get the Superman fired up once again. For those that are just joining us, Superman is a VN Commodore V6 that we bought quite a while ago for just $4,000. We bought it right at the start of this sort of COVID nightmare. And, um, you know, we pay $4,000 for a V6 Commodore and everyone said, you're nuts. Well, turns out we weren't so nuts. Go price at V6 Commodore VN right now. You'd be paying more than four grand. And that thing only had 117,000 Ks on it. And it's a Bellina, so a bit more upmarket, electric windows and all the stuff. It's a good unit. We put a supercharged six in it, an L67 engine with a little bit extra boost and it made, whoa, what? Nearly 280 horsepower at the tires which is pretty respectable. And we were hoping to race it, and then we broke the timing chain, put valves into pistons, all that sort of stuff. It was a stock factory replacement chain. It wasn't much chop. So we have this engine, which we have slung together here in the shed. It's got, you know, new rings and that sort of thing, and we've opened the gaps up, and it's ready to go together. The cam's in there. I'm going to put a new timing chain in it, but I'm going to use, and you're going to hate me for it, this single row timing chain set that uh, we've had sitting here for a little while, it's a crow cam set, which means it's going to be much stronger than your factory timing chain. Now, the reason I'm using the single row is because we haven't done the balance shaft removal, which we, you need to do. If you're going to use, the, there's a double row set there as well. The double row set does not work with a balance shaft. You have to delete the whole balance shaft, which is a whole process and one that I don't want to get into with this engine. So we're going to keep that double row one for our stroker that the guys at Top Talk are building for us. In the meantime though, we'll put together this one with a single row crow cams one that we have here. It'll be fine. I promise you, it'll be fine. I damn hope it'll be fine. But we're putting it together. It should be fine. We'll whack it together. We'll go run some numbers and then we'll put our stroker in, I think. Fingers crossed. Anyway, let's get this together. All right, so we have the crank dialed in at top dead center, number one. Get our timing chain. We've got our top cog. All right, dots have lined up and bang. There we have it. Dot to dot. Doesn't get simpler. I think that's plenty. <laughs> the cam bolts on these things require ridiculous torque. I think that's enough. Now it's time to put in our head studs. So ARP head studs, we're reusing the ones from last time. Now last time I put these in, I used thread sealant and it wasn't very successful. It uh, tended to leak a lot. Uh, we had constant seeping around the head studs. 
um, which wasn't much fun, but I watched a professional build of an L67 engine and the dude had the same problem and he said, use thread tape. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to use thread tape on these. I've never done it before on a, uh, a head stud. However, he swears by it and says it will not leak if you put thread tape on them. I'll go with the experts. Let's give it a try. So we've got these comedic head gaskets that we used before. They are reusable. We're just going to hit them with some copper coat before we uh, reuse them. But I'm just giving them a last wipe over before I hit them with the copper coat. So arrow towards the front, L for left hand side. So we've got our heads here, all prepped by Powerhouse Engines. Um, brand new valves. We've got our good springs in there, our titanium retainers. They're all set up, ready to go. Obviously new seals, new guides as well. Um, we've also machined the, um, because of our cam, we have to machine the actual guides down like a hundred thou just to account for the extra lift of the cam. So that's done as well. So heads are fully re reconditioned, ready to go. Now we're just gonna put washers, nuts on them, a bit of lube, torque them down. Just going to run these down with the old Ryobi. I'll start there. All right, so we'll talk up our heads. Three steps. Just going to start with 60 newton meters, then we'll step it up to like 80 or so, and then the last step's 108.5. Basically it's 80 foot pounds for those that speak uh, old school like me. The beauty of doing the head bolts on these V6s is there's not many of them. Alright, 108.5. Here we go. Last one. And we're done. Okay. So before we seal up the front of the engine, I've got to replace the timing chain tensioner. Unfortunately, I don't have one, so we've got one on order. It'll be coming shortly. Uh, I do have a timing cover here, though. And what I'm going to do is remove this back plate of the oil pump and put this thinner one on. It gives us a little bit more clearance to the timing chain. Probably not as important with our single row timing chain that we have, but uh, 
definitely mandatory with a double row. So I've got two, I've got one for this engine and I've got one for our stroker engine. So I might as well put it on while I've got it here. So as you can see, the oil pump is built into the front of the timing cover there. So there's not a lot of difference in the thickness, but they're just enough to give you that extra clearance. Whack a bit of lube on that, and drop her in place. All right, there we go. Just dab a Loctite. So it looks like we have to replace a couple of our roller lifters. You may remember back when we pulled this engine down, I'd have to, I said I had to uh, check them. And yeah, we can see that uh, we've got a couple collapsed lifters there. The cups are kind of pushed sideways and down. It's not looking that good actually. What I might even do is just buy a whole new set of lifters. It's kind of not worth the risk, I guess. And they're not that expensive. Looks like I'm going to have to put out a call. So after discovering that a bunch of my lifters were damaged, I decided to replace the whole set. So we've been down to Precision and bought a whole new box. It's actually a box of 16 for a V8, but that's all right. It leaves us a couple spares. And these are genuine GM lifters. So the old ones were not. The old ones were like some budget replacement thing. So we'll lube him up. It's funny, they actually use the same lift lifters as the LS1, which is interesting. Maybe it's the wrong thing to say that these use the same lifters as the LS1. Maybe you should say these, the LS1 uses these lifters, given this engine predates the LS1 by quite a bit. Okay, there you go. The LS1 uses GM V6 technology. Alrighty, well. Brand new lifters in, we'll get our push rods in, we'll get our rockers on. Uh, we have our timing chain tensioner now as well. So lots of stuff to do today. I'm hoping that we will have this engine finished together today, ready to drop in the Superman. Because of the base circle changes on this camshaft, there's something I don't think we talked about when we originally put the engine in. There is two push rod lengths. So we've got the 7.050s, which are the short ones. They go in the exhaust. And then we've got the 7.1 inch, which go in the intakes. In the intake. Thankfully, none of these push rods bent when we had our little valve to piston clearance issues. It's probably because they're all very thick wall chrome molly. And our cheap lifters collapsed instead. But anyway, all right. So we've got push rods all in the right holes. <sighs> We can do rockers or we can do timing chain tension. I might do tensioner first before we start putting load on things. Sounds like a good idea. So rather than risk a, uh, a cheap timing chain tensioner, I've gone with genuine GM. I think it'll just save us trouble down the track. Okay. We'll 
torque that up, it should be mint. Well, that'll teach me for getting ahead of myself. I forgot to put these in before I put the push rods in. Yeah, the lifter buckets for locating the roller lifters. <laughs> So I did want to go with a aftermarket rocker option. Unfortunately, the only adjustable rockers available for these require redrilling of the heads, which I don't want to do. Well, not now, not that the heads are on the engine. It's really painful actually. So we'll just stick with the standard rocker gear for the time being. Maybe the stroker will buy the uh, performance option and we'll just get those heads machined to match. done. Rockers are on, push rods are in. I guess we're getting up to the point where we need to start sealing it in. So timing cover goes on, sump goes on, intake goes on. We're getting pretty close now. The Superman will live again. So what I've just put on there is our little drive adapter for the oil pump. Of course, now we have to make the oil pump sort of sync up with it, which is always fun. So the secret there was line up the adapter first, a little further out on the crank, and then sort of line it up, rotate, push on, line it up with the dowels, which it all is at the moment. Now we can bolt that on, get our new balancer on there, get our sump on, get it done. So continuing on with our theme of uh, nice new genuine parts, we're going with a brand new crank angle sensor as well. They are notorious for going on these engines, probably one of their only real weaknesses. So I figure Brand new genuine sensor, ain't gonna hurt. Okay, so just working out the positioning of these three bolts that hold the timing cover on, or three of the bolts, there's certainly more than three, because they have this little part off the end, which clicks into this plastic cover that protects your crank angle sensor from, you know, flying debris and stuff. So basically they go there, there, holding the crank angle sensor on and there. Then once we do them up, they'll just click on like that and then balance it goes on afterwards. Beauty. So now we've got our balancer, which is, um, yeah, very cool. It's got eight rib supercharger drive on it, six rib for the um, accessory drive. Very cool piece of equipment and also uh, SFI specs, so suitable for racing. It is also double key weighed if you want to uh, modify your crank to suit, which we haven't, but that's all right. So because this thing is double keyed way, you gotta make sure you use the right keyway, which is this thin one, not the thick one. So we use the thin one. Uh, we're gonna put a little bit of anti-seize in there just to make sure it slides on nice. 
So just inside there. I reckon that's tight enough. We've come to a really awkward part and something I probably should have addressed before, but what I've done is, um, or what I haven't done, is put the end plate on that contains the rear main seal and seals up the back of the camshaft and all that sort of stuff. And it's all obviously behind this area, which means we've got to lift it up off the stand, remove this, clean it up, put that on, and then we can put it back on the stand and get our sump on because that has to be done before the sump, or should be done before the sump. But yeah, it's just a little bit painful at the moment. Oops. Okay. All right, easy access. It's even angled up nicely. Okay. So just whacking some gasket goo in the holes here for this plate. I'll also put some goo on the threads, but uh, yeah, just got to seal it up the best we can. It's kind of a weird situation. The bolts that came out look like they'd been super glued in. I don't know how they do it from the factory, but yeah, it's, just, it's kind of weird. But we'll do it as good as we can. It's very messy. Yeah, but we'll make it seal. Oh, I made a mess. It's not going to get any better. God damn it. Apparently it's resistant to just about everything. Just doesn't affect it, does it? Diesel, Kero, petrol, antifreeze, you name it. Okay, so we've got the seal plate done up, the mess cleaned up. Get this back on the engine stand, get the sump on it, flip it up. Maybe we'll get it done today. These reusable sump gaskets are the best. You can get them from Mace Engineering. They are perfect. Eighteen little sump bolts. Click. Done. Alrighty, let's flip her over. Okay, now for some intake gaskets. If you're just joining us, we uh, replaced the factory gaskets last time with, you know, the factory gaskets are plastic and they get old and they crack, especially when you throw some boost at them. These metallic or metal gaskets are definitely a upgrade. Because the end seals are all split from uh, our previous use, it doesn't look like they're gonna work this time around. I think we're just going to have to goo the hell out of them just to make them work. So if we're going to do that, we might as well just go straight goo. So we'll just run a nice thick bead like we did with the uh, Chrysler engine. I think that'll do the trick. Yep, we'll do that.
cool. All right. Rocker covers on and we're pretty much done, ready to drop this thing in the car. So, I think that will conclude this episode. Next episode, we get it off the stand, into the car, fire it up, maybe throw it back on the dyno just to make sure that everything is hunky-dory. And then, at some point, we're going to the drag strip. But you're going to see all that on future episodes of Carnage.